Welcome to Matrix and Linear Algebra. Before we get into the matrices and vectors and all of those complicated topics in this subject, we want to take a, a step back and talk about linear equations and systems of linear equations. What they are, how we can define them, and why they're important. So, we need to understand what makes certain equations linear and certain equations nonlinear or not linear. Right? And the best way to do this is just looking at a few examples. So if I had two equations, I'm going to write two equations. The first one's going to be 4x1 plus 3x2 is equal to negative 2. And the second equation I'll just write over here, 3x plus 7y minus 10z is equal to 4. So these are both linear equations. But what makes them linear? There's two important things in both of these equations that do make them linear. And the first one is that none of the variables are raised to a power other than 1. So in the first equation our variables are x1 and x2 and in our second equation we have x, y, and z. All of these variables, these five variables, are raised only to the first power. So none of these variables are quadratic, cubic, squared. Um, they're not raised to any other power except 1. So the second thing is that if you had a fraction in an equation in any of the terms, there should be no unknown variables in the denominator of that fraction. So if we had an equation such as 3x1 plus 7 over 4x2 is equal to 0, this equation would not be linear because you could rewrite this equation as 3x1 plus the coefficient 7 over 4 times x2 to the negative 1 power, and that's equal to 0. So here we have a problem. The variable x2 is raised to the negative 1 power. So since x2 is raised to something other than 1, this power makes this whole equation nonlinear. A general linear equation is just a1 times x1 plus a2 times x2 plus dot 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 a n times x n. There should be a plus sign right here, right? And this is equal to some value on the right hand side we'll just call b. So in this equation we have a lot of unknowns. In fact, we have an n number of unknowns. We have x1, we have x2, x3, x4, all the way up to some xn. And this is equal to b, right? So all the unknowns are x, all the x terms. And all of the knowns, so the values that we know, are a1, a2, a3, a4, all the way up to an, as well as b. We know the value of b. So if we wanted to find something called a solution set for this equation, then we would need to find some set of numbers that satisfy this equation, right? We would need to find values for x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn, so that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, right? So that means that if we found values p1, p2, p3, all the way up to pn, and if these values made sure that the left-hand side equaled the right-hand side, then we would say all these values p are a solution set to this equation. So we could do a little example to kind of solidify our understanding of linear equations in its most basic sense. And I'll do this in green. I'll just write example up here. Let's say we wanted to find the solution set for this equation. 3x1 minus 2 over 5 times x2 is equal to negative 2. So since we only have two variables, x1 and x2, and only one equation, what we could do is we could solve for one of the variables in terms of the other. So let's just solve for x1 in terms of x2. The very first thing we could do is we could add 2 fifths x2 to both sides and that would 
essentially bring this over to the right hand side. So that would be 3x1 is equal to 2 over 5 times x2 minus 2, right? And then we could divide by 3 on both sides. So we'd have x1 is equal to 2 over 5 times 3, which is 15, right? x2 minus 2 thirds. So there's a few important things that we need to notice in this solution. The first is that x1 depends on x2. So we can say that x1 is a function of x2, and that means that we could choose any value for x2, plug it into this equation, and we would get a resulting x1. So in this case, we call x2, this variable right here, a free variable. So that means that x2 could be any value, and we would always satisfy this equation because we would get some value for x1.